Welcome back. It's, um, let's see, September 3rd or 4th, something like that. So it's a few days after the Rolog show or the Western Minnesota Steam Threshers reunion. And this weekend is both, I believe, Dalton and Albany. Or maybe Albany's in two weeks. But either way, I'm not going to be able to make either of those shows, unfortunately. My, my show season's pretty much done, but... Um, that gives me time to get back in the garage and make progress on the uh, Farm All H project. So that's what we're going to do today. But I also wanted to show you a couple other things that are going on in here. So a lot of you guys remember the Montgomery Ward snowblower that I got from Rudy. Um, the drive wheel inside here, you really can't see it, but it's a rubber wheel inside that's uh, giving me issues was it started kind of locking up on me in the end of last year and what's happening is when this drive wheel wears it's supposed to contact this um, drive disc for both the transmission and the the auger assembly but when the drive wheel wears it obviously gets smaller in diameter so that means it drops down and it actually comes in contact with the axle and that locks up the axle. It doesn't allow this drive assembly to function properly. So it's only supposed to touch these, these drive discs. But when it wears, it runs into the axle as well. So that creates a little bit of a binding issue. So I got a new disc coming for that. Um, I've still got to get this wheel off this side. Doesn't, uh, I think it's rusted to the shaft so i'm gonna have to figure that out uh, we also are working on this pressure washer that will not start so i'm guessing it's a carburetor issue so i pulled the carburetor off we're going to clean that out go from there and um see what happens but it's a fairly newer um pressure washer it's a rigid 3,000 PSI, so it's a pretty pretty high pressure pressure washer, so hopefully we can get it going But uh, that's a, a friend of mine's friends, so From there I want to give a huge shout out to Mike in Florida <clears throat> Mike sent out a Vanity plate from the Florida flywheelers And he also sent me this old international wrench, so This will work great on a lot of um, smaller square head bolts so I'll probably use that with like the F20 or something or throw it in the F20s um, toolbox toolbox draw bar mounted toolbox crate if you will so and I have to find a spot to hang this up somewhere so I think I got a spot right over here bam that looks good right there so I got to give a shout out to Mike for that. Thanks a lot, Mike. And I hope you're enjoying your new job. I've only, I know you've only been there a couple days, but hopefully you're enjoying it. So I uh, also got to give a big shout out to Ryan. He donated some wheel weights for the H project. So huge shout out to Ryan. Thanks a lot for those. Um, they're going to go on the H and uh, they'll really help with um, when we take the H to plow days and, you know, maybe even do some tractor pulling with it. So We'll see what happens, but let's get to work on the motor here, or the engine, putting it back together. Uh, what we have to do is get the lifters back in, get our, get our lifter cover or our side axis panel on, put our rockers and push rods in, and our oil line, valve cover, um, and then pro I don't think we'll get the water pump on today because I have to put all the new seals in that yet and the new packing but I think we'll try to get the governor mounted today so we'll go from there 
on that but there is a seal on the back side of the governor's that i want to replace it goes right here behind the control arm so we'll uh see what we can do there so let me get my stuff together and we'll get to work Putting some assembly lube on the uh, the lifters here. That way they move freely up and down. Just try to work it up and down a few times and twist it back and forth to distribute it within the engine block. Or the bores inside the engine block I should say. Try to keep it off the gasket surface because this stuff is very hard to get off. Um, it's very sticky and tacky, so the less the less we get on the gasket surface, the better. Now I did wash out all of these cups in diesel and scrub the insides because inside here you can get a lot of crud that accumulates and that can cause a lot of issues when you're going to try to adjust the valves. That's what happened to me on that F20 when I was trying to get it running. I kept fighting that crud down inside those, those lifters and um, the best thing that I did was clean them things out because once they were clean first time around we uh, were able to get those valves adjusted properly so oh granted that f20 I mean it needs needs quite a bit of work yet but it runs it runs and drives and it's not horrible so Better than nothing. And these screws for the, or the bolts I should say, for the, the side access panel, they have a copper washer on them to help, help them seal. So I've got new copper washers I'll put on there. And that'll help keep everything as sealed up as possible anyway. I'll get the last one in and I'm probably going to shut the camera off now just because it's going to be way back in here. So I got to move this thing to get it out of my way. So we'll uh, get that done and put the side cover on. Okay, now before I put this side cover on, don't forget to put this piece of strap steel in that goes with the kind of the beveled edge towards the block. Um, this, the purpose of this is to keep the lifters from falling out should you tip the engine over on an engine stand. So that's the whole purpose of this.
Otherwise, when you roll it over, they'll all fall out of there without the push rods and uh, the rocker arms in place. So now that we got that in, we'll uh, go ahead and put the cover on. All right, guys, we've got the side cover on for the, the lifters. We've also got the vent tube on, the crankcase vent tube. And there's a little wire clip here for the magneto kill switch wire. Got that on. I've also installed the rockers and the push rods. I haven't adjusted anything yet, but everything's installed. I've got the oil line on. And everything's pretty self-explanatory when it comes to this stuff. Um, there's four studs for your rocker arms. So you put those rocker arms on. Make sure you have your oil distribution line aligned up with the hole in the head for that. And then when I'm installing the rockers, I always tip the rocker arms down into the push rods. That way when I'm sliding them down, it automatically kind of catches the, the cup on the top of the push rod and then it will automatically push the rocker down as you push the rocker arm assembly down. So there's that. Uh, the oil line's in place. Now this is just a drip oiling system. It drips oil all along on your rockers here. Um, really all we got to do is put the valve cover on and then the top side is done except for the water pump and the let's see it'd be the water outlet so the water pump mounts here and then the water outlet mounts to the top of the head so that's all we really have to do on the top side now on the bottom side we have to install the rear main and in order to do that it'd probably be easier with this thing off of the engine stand so i'm going to try and put it on while it's on the engine stand but i can already tell i need to take and uh clean the gasket surface up here so i'm gonna have to just pull this thing off the engine stand and and put it on the hoist so Let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm just going to put the valve cover on quick. That way this end is pretty much buttoned up. I'll adjust all the valves when I set the engine in the tractor. Um, also, when I do the valve cover gasket, I put RTV just on the bottom side, just a real light skim coat on the bottom side to help, help that seal. Uh, the top side, I don't put any RTV on because... If I do need to take the valve cover off, that RTV is going to be like glue. So without it on the top side, I can just lift the valve cover off if I need to. So that uh, should take care of everything there. So let me get the, the gasket for the valve cover. We'll put that on quick. Um, real quick, you do need copper washers between the valve cover nut and the valve cover itself to help seal the uh, the oil inside. So similar to what we've done here with the um, copper washers below the nuts on the side cover or the bolts on the side cover. So let's get that uh, top end buttoned up and we'll go from there. Okay guys, we got the valve cover and everything on. Again, I didn't set the valves yet, but I will when we get the get the engine in the tractor but I wanted to kind of describe how I did the rear main seal this light isn't really working for me Let's see if I can just turn it towards the light in the garage so this rear main has two halves it's got the upper half and the lower half easiest way to do it is to bolt the two halves together while it's on the crankshaft here in the rear and then from there um, put in the bolts that attach it to the back side of the block the reason why you do it that way is because the rear main seal is just a big felt or cotton seal and when you pinch that seal together when you put the two halves together it'll it'll help in aligning the holes that go into the back side of the block here instead of trying to put the holes in the block first and then pinch everything together um, it's easier to draw that seal tight around the crankshaft and make sure you use uh, a lot of oil in that in that seal. So 
I usually just soak it really well in oil after I install it. That way it's uh, kind of pre-packed, so to speak. Um, I did install the rear engine plate. Something to keep in mind uh, when you do install this plate, there are two guide pin holes. Uh, the one with the guide pin hole on the upper side goes on the carburetor side or the manifold side of the tractor. And then the guide pin hole that's on the lower side goes on the magneto or distributor side of the tractor. So we'll go ahead and put this back in the stand and get the oil pan on it. And then it's just the governor housing that I think I'm going to finish up with tonight. And then we'll do the water pump next time. And that's about it. So let me get this thing back in the stand and we'll go from there. Okay, guys, we've got the engine mounted back up in the stand. I also installed the oil filter, but that's just four bolts here. And there's a gasket between there. Let's see if I can get this thing turned so you can see it in the light here. There we go. So there's a little bracket that goes on the bottom of the, the breather tube and connects to the, the oil pan bolt. I've got all that together. Uh, there is a, I guess I'll call it a gap guard with a gasket between there or a dust seal that goes on the bottom of the engine adapter plate. So we're getting there. Oh, I got to put a bolt here. I'm missing a bolt there. Better get that in before I forget. It always helps to look things over. I also made a new pin for the hand crank in the end of the crankshaft. I just used a, a shoulder out of a bolt and mounted it in there. It should be a roll pin, but this will be fine. I probably won't be hand cranking it much anyways. But I'm going to stop here for the night because I opened up the governor. And for one, there's a lot of sludge in there, so I want to clean it all out. Um, whoa, drop the camera. <laughs> the bearing feels good and tight. There aren't any, there aren't any, um, the weights have quite a bit of, uh, anyways, the, the bearing feels good, but the weights, they have quite a bit of, I don't know if you can see that, but quite a bit of side-to-side -side movement on the pin there. And the spring is definitely loose in there. But what really has me concerned is if I lift this thing up see the the shaft here see how much it moves up and down now when I pull this apart I'll see if the shaft is worn otherwise uh, there's a piece in the casting that it goes through it'll make a lot more sense when I get this thing apart but it's either the shaft that's going to be worn or the casting itself so that kind of has me nervous well, not really nervous, but it'll need to be replaced, whatever part that is worn. So we might be looking at finding a good set of weights for this, but the rotating assembly in this, I believe, is pressed in. So I'm not exactly sure how this comes apart as far as the actual rotating assembly in here. But the bearings are feel very good. There's no no pits or anything in them, so that's good. But this is where I'm going to stop. I was going to work on the governor tonight, but this pin seems pretty tight still, so that's good. The pin inside this linkage here. Sometimes these wear out either the pin or the actual linkage itself uh, there's a little play but 
it's not horrible so anyhow we'll uh we'll get to disassembling this in the next video and that's all i've got for today so we're getting there hopefully you know hopefully it's uh not too much longer but from here we got to do the governor we still got to do the water pump um i'd like to have the manifold ceramic coated but you know it all comes down to how much money do we want to spend you know um once once the governor and the water pump are done then i think those can go back on the engine and the engine is ready to go back in the tractor but before i do that i'm going to pull the chassis in here and we're going to do all the seals in the rear end and rebuild the front bolster so those are kind of the next things on our to-do list so i hope you guys enjoyed and um thanks for watching thanks for wrenching with me and that's all i've got so talk to you guys later